The Milky Way season is coming soon, are you ready for it? And if you want to photograph the Milky Way, you first need to know how to find it, which is what I'm going to share with you today in this video. Also, if you plan to photograph the Milky Way in Malaysia, I have created a time sheet for you to help you in planning your shooting. If you're interested in learning more on how to photograph the Milky Way and also how to process the photo to bring out the detail and the color of the Milky Way, I have a dedicated workshop for this. To find out more about the workshop, you can check out the link in the below description of this video. Some of the most common mistakes that a beginner fail to photograph the Milky Way is that they either pointing the camera in the wrong direction or maybe they are taking the photo at the wrong timing. It can be either too early before the Milky Way arrived from the horizon or maybe it was too late. Milky Way doesn't stay still in one position throughout the year. It will move from one direction to another direction, which is why it's important to know how to find the Milky Way so that you can plan your shooting. Also, knowing how to locate the Milky Way means that you can plan your photo shooting for a much better composition. For example, like this photo here, I even had to capture this Milky Way right above this key monastery. And because I already planned ahead so that I know that at what time the Milky Way will be right at this position. So I just need to make sure that I'll be at there at the right time. Here's another example which I wanted the Milky Way to be at the center of the frame so that it can be in line with the lighthouse and that's create a much better composition. Before I talk about how to locate the Milky Way, there are two things you need to consider first. One is the light pollution. In order for you to photograph the Milky Way, you should go to a place that is dark enough and with zero light pollution or at least minor light pollution. And in order for you to find all these areas, you can use this light pollution map that you can find on internet, one of them is this so-called the dark side finder. On the dark side finder, you can see that the map is labeled with different colors. Ideally, you should look for areas with green, blue, or black color. Those areas are the areas with minor light pollution and zero light pollution, which is suitable to photograph the Milky Way. The second thing to consider is the moon phase. To photograph the Milky Way, the best is to avoid the full moon and to take photo during the new moon. Now, let's back to our main objective of this video, which is how to locate the Milky Way. You don't have to be an expert in astronomy to locate the Milky Way. There are plenty of software and also the mobile app to help you in doing the job. One of my most favorite software is the Stellarium. Stellarium has both desktop and mobile app version. I prefer the desktop version because first it's free and second is that you can use it on a bigger screen which makes it easier for you to observe the Milky Way moving from one direction to another direction. If you have a problem in using the light pollution map in finding a good location for the Milky Way, I have a blog post that talks about the best locations in Malaysia to photograph the Milky Way. You can check out the link in the below description. As you can see here, have the Stellarium open. This is the interface of the software and if you look at the bar at the bottom here, it stated the current date and time that I'm currently running the software now. Also, it stated that my current location is in Kuala Lumpur and it's going to base on this location to do the simulation for the Milky Way. So let's try to change the date to another day. So let's say 23rd of May, which is during the new moon. And I already got this info from the timeanddate.com. To change the date, just go to this date time window and change it to May 23rd. And for the time, I'm going to change it to 20, which is around 8 o'clock. And as you can see here, this line here is the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is actually always there in the sky. But when we're out to photograph the Milky Way, we are aiming the galactic center of the Milky Way, which is the most colorful part of the Milky Way. But as for now, you can't see the galactic center because the core is yet to rise from the horizon. The good thing about this software is that you can fast forward the time, and the Stellarium will show how the night sky changed throughout the time. So I'm going to fast forward the time now just by clicking on this like fast forward button here. And you can see then the Milky Way slowly rise from the horizon. And this is the galactic core. Let's pause it for a while. And if you want to make the Milky Way look more obvious on the Stellarium, 
you can just go to the sky viewing options window here and just increase the brightness of the Milky Way. It looks more obvious now. Now, let's continue to fast forward time. In Malaysia, the Milky Way rise from the east direction and slowly move to the south direction. At the same time, the Milky Way position also rotated from horizontal into a vertical position. And then it will slowly set into the west direction. Or to be more precise, it's the southwest direction here. Okay, that's the daytime now. So basically, we can photograph the Milky Way in three different directions, east, south, and west. You can find a photo subject based on this info, and when the time comes, you just need to be at the shooting location with your camera. Again, if you don't know where to go, you can check out the below description for my blog post, the best locations in Malaysia to photograph the Milky Way. Also note that this is how the Milky Way looks like if you are in Malaysia or any other countries that are at the equator. Now, let's say if I want to change the location to another country, maybe like a country in Northern Hemisphere or maybe in Southern Hemisphere. So for example, like New Zealand. So to change the location, there's a location window here. Just search Christchurch and just select the option here. You can see the background already changed. I also want to change the date. Using the same date, 23rd, and but this time I'm going to change the date, the time to around like six o'clock. The time is going to be slightly different in Malaysia due to different time zone, and also the night time there in May is longer than Malaysia. Now, you can see that the Milky Way is still rising from the east direction. Let's fast forward the time. Um, but it's already in this, but it already in the vertical position. And instead of going from the east to the south, it moved toward to the north direction. With something different to, with Malaysia. So if you want to go to other countries for photographing the Milky Way, it's better to do a study first using Stellarium, as the Milky Way is going to move in a different way. Other than Stellarium, there are also apps like Starwalk, Starchart, etc. And most of them have free or paid versions. But I think that you can just get the free version, which is good enough, because most of the time you are going to use the app only to find the Milky Way. So that's how I locate the Milky Way using the Stellarium software. For other apps, they should work in a similar way. And if you would like to photograph the Milky Way in Malaysia, as I mentioned before, I already have this timesheet created. And let me show you. Uh, as you can see that this is the timesheet that I created for the year 2020. It started from 22 February and until 4th of July. And there's one more here which is started on 11 July and until 21st November. Each of these days here is the Saturday of every weekend, which is the time that people usually go out for the shooting. And showing the time from 8 o'clock until the 6 o'clock in the early morning, and that which is the night time in Malaysia. The orange bar indicate that when the Milky Way start to appear in the horizon. So for example, for the 22 February, it will appear at the horizon at around 5 a.m. in the morning. And for the 2nd of May, you can see that the Milky Way rise before 1 a.m. To keep things simple, so I will always recommend you to take photo during the new moon time. And you can see that on the left of this chart here, they have indicate when is the new moon and when is the full moon. So the best timing, I would say, like for example, like April 18 or maybe 25th April, that would be a better choice. You can download the timesheet while the link that I put in the below description of this video. So check it out. So that's all for this video. I hope you like it and you think it's helpful enough. So feel free to share with your friend. And don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to my video channel. That's all. See you.